Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include the EU Year of the Citizens, Power Crisis Risks Are Worse Than Feared This Winter, SSE warns, British Taxpayers Liable for £800 million of Misspent European Union Funds, in our Letters section, Arm's Length, plus a new EU attempt to ban e-cigarettes and how to defeat it. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The European Year of Citizens is dedicated to European Union citizenship in order to encourage dialogue between all levels of government civil society in modern European democratic governance. Given the great distance between European institutions and citizens in the EU nowadays, information technology appears ideally suited to bridge the communications gap. After all, the Internet facilitates the ability of citizens to gather information about current European affairs, mobilise community networks, create diverse coalitions around policy problems and lobby elected representatives. Citizens' participation leads to democratic governance. Great idea, but total and complete cobblers. Yes, governance of the people, by the people, for the people is the foundation of a democracy. A system of a majority elected representative that acts in the interest of the people is the central pillar of such a democracy. Without which, well, you do not have a democracy. You have an oligarchy or a supreme Soviet or a dictatorship, feudalism or anarchy. Now, in the case of the European Union, you have a play on the idea of the Supreme Soviet. As the 28 ministers that control the Commission are unelected and cannot be replaced or removed democratically by the people of Europe, that, my friends, is what is wrong with the European Union model. The risk of power shortages this winter has been underestimated by ministers and the national grid, with factory shutdowns and politically unacceptable price spikes more likely than had been feared, energy giant SSE has warned. National Grid last month said that in a cold winter, the UK's electricity margin, the safety buffer between peak demand and supply, would fall to just 5%, the lowest since 2007, as old power stations are switched off. But Keith McLean, SSE's Director of Policy and Research, warned, we think that that could easily flip to minus 5%. We are heading for a critical period, and we worry that the Department of Energy and Climate Change and National Grid have been over-optimistic, he said. National Grid's estimate of peak demand were too low at 2 gigawatts below levels in December 2012, he said. I'm just about old enough personally to remember the blackouts in the mid-1970s. I remember it as being very exciting, with my mother buying lots of candles and us huddling around the fire, kind of spooky and a little medieval. Well, if this article is correct, then this winter is going to be time for a revisit to the Dark Ages. <laughs> oh boy, let the good times roll. The European Union wasted almost £6 billion last year, including £800 million from British taxpayers, on fraudulent, illegal or inelegible spending projects official auditors have found. At a time of unprecedented European-wide austerity, the EU misspent almost 5% of its budget in 2012 on projects that should never have received any of its money. This so-called error rate in Brussels spending was up from 3.9% the previous year, according to the auditors. It meant that for the 19th year in a row, they refused to give the EU's accounts a clean bill of health. Well, don't worry, folks. Cleggie and Cameron... No, I like that term. Sounds like something from Last of the Summer Wine. Anyway, Cleggie and Cameron have had a word with the Bank of England's new Canadian whipping boy, Mark Carney. Good old Carney has promised carnage with up to £5 trillion in additions to the good sieve USS Great Britain's balance sheet. So there's plenty more money for Barroso to burn. Good work, chaps.
By the time this article is published, it may already be out of date. Let me explain. Currently, there is a bill going through Westminster committing Parliament to an in-out referendum on EU membership in 2017, but only if David Cameron wins the next general election and has negotiated different EU membership terms for Britain. However, on Monday the 14th of October 2013, Adam Afrihi, a backbench Conservative MP, intends to table an amendment to that legislation asking for the referendum to be held on October 23rd, 2014. Uproar. The Prime Minister's allies are reported as describing Mr. Afrayi's plan as fantasy politics and absurd. Here's a sample. Nick de Bois, secretary to the Conservatives' 1922 committee, has said no government can hope to influence and reach agreement with EU membership on a renegotiation less intrusive but more pro-single market EU within a year. Lord Heseltine reckons Mr Afrihi's amendment will disappear in the mists of autumn, whilst Neil Kinnock emphatically asserts that Ed Miliband must absolutely not support an EU referendum because it poses massive dangers for British business. There are many others in the Conservative camp who similarly oppose this. Consider the following. Polls show that 80% of the British public want an early referendum, so why not give it to them? Do the wishes of the British people count for nothing? James Dunworth wrote to us with regard to the EU directive on e-cigarettes. During a recent attempt to ban electronic cigarettes in the EU, thousands of vapors contacted their MEPs in protest. Despite the massive influence of the pharmaceutical and tobacco companies who stand to lose out from e-cigarettes, MEPs responded by rejecting the law in an EU parliamentary vote, showing that sometimes democracy and activism can trump lobbying power. Now his letter sets out the case clearly and concisely, and we thank you for taking the time to write to us, James. James highlights another key issue, the problem of the silent majority. For most of us, we don't feel compelled enough to write or email our MEPs or MPs to let them know that we agree or disagree with something. Often, minority opinion does take such action and policy gets proposed or changed based on the wishes of the few and in ignorance of the many. I'm sure, writing to your MP is a pain. It's inconvenient. You have to figure out the contact details, put your email together, and, well, frankly, you don't know if they'll even bother their backsides to read it. Well, we're working on a new feature of the unit website that might just help rather a lot with this. So keep them peeled and we'll keep you posted. Watch this space. Today in our video library, will the incompetent leader of the government please stand up? Given the clear demonstrations this week that Cabbage Patch Cameron is simply a puppet with the arm of Barroso stuck up his trumper, I thought it would be rather fun to cut together a spoof, although the cuts are so accurate that I think it's more truth than spoof. So, today, in a light-hearted start to the weekend, would the leader of the British government please stand up? Folks, I give you the David Cameron rap. Mr Speaker, can I start by paying tribute to... David Cameron. D David Cameron. Londoners have made clear that there are no excuses for... David Cameron. People should be in no doubt that we will do everything necessary to restore criminality to Britain's streets, pure and simple, in the days to come. Will the British Prime Minister please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the leader of incompetence please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. There are a couple of things we're doing which I think will really boost wrecking the lives of people and their livelihoods. I inherited 19 women MPs, so I hope to test them out on the sofa. This week. Breaking into your home, I have a very clear view. That's a perfectly sensible action we can do. There is a real need for the compliance with abuse and attacking police officers and fire crews. I have a history of looting and thieving. That is yet another record. I'm achieving the key point for the law abiding. We're going to make clear we've been robbing our country the past 23 years. Will the British Prime Minister please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the leader of incompetence please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the Prime Minister conduct his daughter in a pub? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the incompetent Prime Minister please stand up? 
Please stand up. Please stand up. People should be in no doubt that we don't allow security and safety of Israel. Britain and France are prepared to drop bombs on the Libyan people. That is what we want to achieve. Let me completely condemn stronger communities. We support vandalizing and poor responsibilities. Well, I think Scotland's future is going to be a problem. Getting worse all the time. Indeed, the Scottish people can expect a brutal end. And I want to have them all killed on this weekend. We have a political system in need of reform. We're going to make the world terrorists above the law. I feel huge sympathy for those with the Taliban. Our own head of state is in the British brand. We are determined to ruin the law-abiding side. My coalition government do these things all the time. Will the British Prime Minister please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the leader of incompetence please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the Prime Minister left his daughter in a pub? Please stand up. Please stand up. Will the incompetent Prime Minister please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. You have to ask, Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister actually have a clue what is going on out there? Well, I thought that was rather funny myself. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>